Welcome back everyone. I haven't been putting out too many videos because I've just been busy with at the house with some work that I'm doing there. I want to get that stuff done so I can start working on more fun stuff. Anyway, the last video I told you I'm going to be working on the RM. I'm going to get this bike ready to sell. This is a fully customized bush bike. It's set up as a bush bike instead of a race bike. I've never rode the trap. I've always rode mountains and in the woods so that's the way this bike is set up. Anyway, it has a stock rear spring on the suspension. And I wanted to revalve it because I've revalved the fork. I'm a heavier rider. Apparently these things are set up for a 160 pound rider. I was always bottoming this thing out. So I've got my, I bought all the stuff from Race Tech years ago and I've just never got around to putting it together. That's the Race Tech gold valve. I've got everything I need here. I've got, so I bought some Bell Ray. I'm sure this is good stuff. Here's my gold valve kit. I decided that I'd upgrade, oops, upside down. I thought I'd update the There goes the spring to the gold valve. So there's a seal kit, there's my shim kit there, new nut and all that good stuff. So I've got all that. I also bought a factory Suzuki main shock seal just in case, even though your kit comes with one, but it's cut and I'll, I'll talk about that later. So when you're doing this, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You're going to have a video that comes with this, a CD. So now, like I say, I ordered this part a long time ago and I just never got around to putting it in, which was kind of silly because at this point I'm, I'm going to be selling the bike, but I just want to get it all done so it has matching suspension front and rear. So it, you got instructions. I've got the factory service manual for this bike here that I'll be using as well. It's uh, my 2006RM250. Here's your code here. Go to Race Tech's website and I'll just go back a page. Go into DVS valve search, which is right here. And then you enter that just erased but anyways I, I enter in in your code there it's really easy it comes up I think it gives you an hour you can print off the sheet at one hour access to the website it's best to print it off hopefully the printer at the shop here is working when I when I do this search take, you can take a picture of the screen print that whatever works for you in any case the factory service manual also has all your procedures in it which is really good see this I've got it on the page for ride height sag you got the instructions here and then you got a video so it's pretty easy to do this one of the first things they tell you to do is measure your spring length. So what your preload is on the spring from factory, which I've already done. I've cleaned this off, washed it off. I uh, just put a, nut, a bolt through here to hold my front front bearing tight so I don't lose anything there and I didn't get any water in there. I wanted to make sure the seals are tight. I've already got the one nut backed off. So I'm gonna start off with taking the spring apart. I'm gonna drain the nitrogen out of the bladder, get that ready to go. I've got all the tools. They, they even have a, a tools required part here on if, you, if you're doing this job, you're gonna know about all this. It tells you what you're gonna need. The only thing I don't have is that is the tool to push down your, what I call the guide, but they call it the shock head in there. Shocks to me are like a, cause I'm from a heavy duty background. These are like a hydraulic cylinder to me that the main seals on them like this. It's very similar to hydraulic cylinders. You heavy duty guys are gonna, are gonna recognize that. So it's not, there's nothing in here that's very, that's really complicated. I think the shim stack, building the shim stack is the most complicated part of this. It's a bit tedious grinding the, the peening off the nut, of course, but it's, it's all there in the video. Just use common sense and be careful and I'm sure that you'll be fine. Now, the other thing that they tell you to do is count your rebound, where your rebound is set at. So how many turns in and out your compression and rebound valves here are set. So you want to set that record that now and set it with your new spring and valve package in. It's kind of exciting to finally getting this done. Like I say, I've been sitting on the parts for quite a while now. So um, see how this performs. Hopefully I can take the bike out for a couple rides before I, before I sell it and see how this works. Okay, so there's a couple different styles of, of shock. In the video, there's two different clips that hold this in. Mine, there's only one. I was, and he has a special tool that's made out of aluminum, it looks like, or steel, that he's able to, it goes around here like a horseshoe and he pushes it down. I was able to just push the shock head, the seal head, as they call it, down with my fingers and get enough room in there. 
that I can get my O-ring pick in. This one's coming out pretty easy. Problem is, is it's going the wrong way. Going into the body of it instead. So you want to be careful you don't scratch any of that up in there. Cause a leak. Yeah, come on. Come on now, there we go. So there's my other circlip. Now the shock will come apart. I'm just gonna tilt it a little bit more horizontal here, man. These vice jaws are a pain. Let's get her apart. Okay, maybe not. Make sure there's not another snap ring in there. Okay, I don't think there is. So I think it's just the seals catching on the snap ring groove at this point. There we go. You don't want to get too crazy with it and force it because you don't want to tear any seals or anything that's not supposed to be torn, of course. All right, so there's the disassembly of it. So you want to check your seal, your main seal here to make sure that it's too badly worn or if there's any tears or anything you want to take note of that or if it's degrading which this one probably has some wear so like i say this this bike's been ridden you know, like it was ridden it's got some hours on it and it looks like this main seal definitely has some wear so that's good that i'm doing a service on it yeah so it's not in the greatest shape there's definitely some wear on that so i was ready for a new a reseal definitely ready for new fresh oil some of these marks are just chatter marks kind of from taking it out of the body because it caught a little bit on that ring one of the things that i didn't mention is before you take where after you take your circlips out or your snap rings out of here out of the body of the shock you want to make sure that you don't have any burrs on those on these lips here and if you do just you just got to file them down a little bit so anyways, of course, just an inspection here. You want to check your O-rings. I may have a new O-ring for the head. I hope I do because that one's getting pretty square. I've got O-ring kits here at the shop, so I should be able to do that. So you can see here that ah, it's kind of interesting that some, it almost looks like somebody's already been into this shock once because this is ground down and from the factory, it shouldn't be. So it's got peen marks on it. But it looks like this shock has been worked on. So it could very well be that this already has a custom valve stack in it. I wasn't told that when I bought it though. And it looks like it's got the factory spring, so it's probably a lighter rider than me anyway. So I'm gonna dump the rest of this skanky oil out. I'm gonna have to wash this shock body out really well because there's definitely some wear from the seals and the body and stuff on it and that's the name of the game is keeping everything really clean when you're working on anything with this hmm yeah so i'll find out i guess what the shim stack i, I guess i can compare the shim stack to the to the one that i'm going to build off the race tech website because i'm almost there i'm not going to bother i might i'll probably replace this o-ring here on the head because it's like i say getting a bit square hopefully there's one in my kit if not, I'll just match that up. I think that it's just a, a metric O-ring. I'm surprised it doesn't have a backup ring on it actually, but I've got a lot of O-rings and collections from hydraulic cylinders and whatnot. Should be able to find something. This head, I probably should have got a shock head for it or seal head, I guess they call it. Anyway, I didn't, uh, I didn't see it. It wasn't leaking really bad. There wasn't like drips of oil or anything on the cap. So I think that'll be all right. Now it's just gonna be getting this nut off here, which shouldn't be too bad since it's been done before. So that saves me one of the steps that's kind of tedious. I guess that's a bonus. And then I'm gonna start my, I'm gonna clean everything and then I can go ahead and start my shim stack build. So I'll have to log on to the race tech site there and hopefully I can print what I need to do here. There's been some problems with the printer down here lately. So that's next. Okay, so I've got my, <clears throat> I've got this cleaned up here, you can see that what peening does is is it just 
I'll just make sure you can see that right. It just displaces some, <clears throat> excuse me, some metal. So what you want to do is, I've got a little bit of a burr there still. It's, that's going to happen. I've got a new nut. The Racetech gold valve kit comes with a new nut to put on there, which is good because otherwise it'd probably be a, a dealer only part. It'd be hard to find because of the thread pitch. In any case, I just took a scotch bright in my die grinder here. 90 degree die grinder and I just buffed the the flare kind of if you will a little bit of displaced metal from the peening process there so they peened that in four different places this was probably done at the dealership that this bike was bought at I think the shim stack was probably has probably been been built but it's not for my weight because of the way it performed when I was riding the bike I, I think it's too light for me so I'll, I'm gonna go ahead I've got I've already paid for the shim stack and everything, or the, the information and the parts from Race Tech. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and upgrade. So this is a 17 millimeter socket here. I'm just going to take that off now. And like I say, some of the some of that metal that's that's been peened on there, this was really tight. I'm sure it's got Loctite on it. Some of that metal is going to stay there, and it's going to it might gall the nut as the nut comes off, but it's not going to affect the shaft anymore that's what you got to be worried about is you just got to be careful of your shaft and the threads on it. yeah it's all covered in red loctite so it took some took a little bit of grunt to get it off so somebody is has been into this shock and had the valve stack apart the video that you get will show you how to grind that off and it looks exactly like this whoever did it did a good job of it here i'll show you the race tech the instructions here and this is what he's going to refer to in the video as well and see this line here is just taking the peened you can't go too far because you don't want this valve to come out here the inside of the peening holds this rebound valve in and you don't want that loose because it can come out when the bike's in service and if you if you're if you're watching the video on race tech he's going to explain all this and here's your angle here i think they just take it to a bench grinder that's what i've seen done and they just grind that off on an, on an angle and that's why this nut here that's why it's ground like that as well so it's nice that the race tech kit comes with the new nut maybe this is just actually it looks like you could just use a go ahead and get get a metric nut from a it looks like it's just metric coarse thread so i, I didn't know that i thought that it would might be something that's a little more specific but that's it that's good news so if you're stuck and you got to replace this nut you should be able to source one fairly easily so on the video He's going to talk about keeping all these in in the right order, which is important. So this is ready to come off now. I'm not going to, I don't want to pull it off and have everything fly everywhere because this, there it is. That's Loctite's probably holding it on. I'll probably just have to give it a tap to get it loosened up because the Loctite's kind of holding it up a little bit in here. It's glued it onto the shaft a little, try and get some of that out of there. If you don't though, if you look closely at the shim stack, this particular one, you can see that it just goes small to big. These last few are really close in size, the, the, the smallest diameter shims. But if you were, if you did get all these mixed up, you can take a video, you can take pictures or whatever while you're rebuilding this. But if you did get it mixed up and you had to put it all back together again, I think that just with the instructions in the factory service manual and common sense, you could probably figure out where all the shims actually go. And then these, these bottom ones are the ones that are gonna be in you know, they're all the same size. Those are the important ones. You'd want to get the right thicknesses and the right spots on those. I think it would probably, you probably could get it back together and get it functioning pretty good. If that were the case, if you, if you accidentally, like if these all came off and you're going to reuse them again, you had to reorganize them. That's, but that's something that you don't want to get mixed up. See, there's one here underneath this, your big washer on the bottom. So the way this works is that's, that's to, to control oil flow. So the st shim stack and the thickness of the shims is going to make the oil flow at a different rate, which is going to dampen differently. And that's going to be matched to the weight of the rider. So there is, I don't know how they figure that stuff out with the engineering at the tech shop, but that's the, that's the reasoning behind revalving the shock. And apparently it makes a huge difference. Gold valve flows more oil through it. So more oil is getting into the shim stack and allowing it to do its job. Now that's, that's the thing is the more oil that flows through, the more you can tune your shock with shims is my theory behind it. So the, 
the, the factory one, if it doesn't flow as much oil, you're only going to be able to tune your shock as much as this factory piston flows oil, if that makes sense. If you can flow more oil, you can add shims and tune the shim stack because you've got the oil flow and the shims are controlling it, not the piston. If I hope that makes sense, but that is, that's my understanding of this because the gold valve does flow more, let allow more oil through it. Anyway, so that's, that's what I assume is, is going to be the big upgrade. And like I say, my forks, since I put the gold valves in, they're a little stiff because of course I've got heavier springs than what it was stock. But I also haven't played around with the compression rebound at all on it because I haven't really rode the bike a lot in the last few years since I've done the, the work on it. Anyways, I'm going to take this apart. Just take a coat hanger and bend it like this. That's what he does on the video, on the Race Tech video. And I might have to screw this top one off. Yeah, see, there's just some Loctite holding it in. So you're probably going to run into that, especially if somebody's worked on your bike like this one somebody's had this thing apart there we go so that's that that's that one make sure i put it back on the way it was and then you just want to put your piston and your shim stack on like this there we go it's going to hold, hold it all together i'm not even going to take the head off i don't want to take i don't have a new piston head or new seals to put in here usually every time i take a hydraulic cylinder apart you usually replace all your seals if you're going this far but they, like I say, this wasn't leaking or anything, and this isn't really a service item. I think you can just buy the Moose new head for this is usually the way, I think, the cheapest way to go. And these little seals, replacing these little seals can get really tedious, and it's hard to do. And if you if you were to damage one, you'd have to buy another seal kit. So either can be done. You could replace the seals on this, or you could buy just a, another shock head and replace it. I'd probably just go with the head because I know what a pain it is replacing the seals. This one I'm not going to worry about because there's no damage on the shaft here. It wasn't leaking oil. There wasn't a bunch of oil down in this cap here. That's where it's going to show up if it's leaking. And then on the outside. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to revalve this thing, put a new piston seal on, and put it all back together. Fresh oil. I've washed out the body. Now what you're going to want to do is make sure there's a bit of a burr here on the body. Now you want to take the burr off, but you don't want to make that sloped. Where that actually what it is is it's just a wear mark where that snap ring or that circlip was holding the the seal head in if you start deburring this just make sure you don't put too much of a slope on there and, it'll, and it allows for that you know it's not going to hold the circlip nothing and it could come apart so deburring is just basically taking a sharp tool probably a little sharper than this or you could sharpen like the an old screwdriver or something and just going around and making sure that that's not sharp on there so it doesn't cut the seal going in. I'm not too worried about it. It's got to be actually protruding in like this to the shock body to affect the seal when you're putting the seal back together because you've got a taper on the bottom part so it doesn't affect the seal. So going back together, I think it'll be fine. It's when, when you come out, usually that's going to catch your seal and tear it or do some damage to it, which doesn't matter because we're replacing the seals anyway. And it's the same thing on your nitrogen bladder. It looks like it's in really good shape on this one. I'm not going to worry about that. I just cleaned all this out with fresh brake clean. Probably going to put some never sees on, on here when going back together because this hasn't been apart in a long time and you might have noticed that it was kind of difficult spinning the, the adjuster nut for the spring. In any case, I'm about halfway there now. So all I've got to do is go onto the Racetech website and log in to or enter my code and then when i was revalving my forks because their video that on the fork rebuild for the for this bike for my bike was kind of anti antiquated and it didn't i had to call them and ask some questions you phone them they answer the phone the tech support's really good and they even encourage you in the videos if you bought their their stuff they will answer the phone when you call and help you through the process of put installing it so i have to say that they do have excellent service there and i'm pretty happy with that point is is they're open today and I'm and nothing is in Canada so if I need to phone them they're gonna they're gonna be available so if, uh, if if my code doesn't work because I bought this shock years and years ago I'm gonna have to phone them and tell them what happened I'm on the website right now so I'm just gonna show you what I've got to enter here so I've already put my code in what do I, where is Suzuki there it is right there now I'm just putting in my information here on who I am and 
rider weight, all that good stuff. So this is what you're going to find after you after you enter your code onto the Racetech website. So I'm yeah, DR650. Nope, thought I caught that. Yeah, so I don't RMZ250 is my only option here. Yeah, I've had this. Oh no, wait a second. That's because I don't have the right year in. Okay. Oh six. RM250. So it's just asking all my. I got to put my weight in and my name and all that stuff. So gonna go ahead and do all that this is a screen right after also on the website you can click open up a new tab I'll show you where it is here here general rebuild and valving information so you can go ahead and click on this it takes you to this page and it's going to show you your low speed stack all that stuff how to build your shim stack here how to service your shock how to deburr this is even better than the manual I think I'll print this off it's a few pages long but this will be really good to have that's a good breakdown right there that's going to show you I the what you want to do like how you want to build your shim stack I the difference I'm seeing right now with the stock shim stack or the shim stack that's in my bike whether somebody's adjusted it or not is the race tech one has two stages so I don't see this narrow shim in my in the the stack that's in it now so I think that's what the gold valve is all about is is having two stages high speed low speed and that's what makes the big difference in your in your suspension mine has to be drilled so i got to drill the bleed hole out i'll show you that in a minute so a lot of the stuff the video is generic for the forks and the valve stack so i'm just th this is a little more specific on my rm there's a few differences between the race tech video and and like you know every shock is a little bit different over the years they've changed so this shows pretty much everything that's in the video, but a little, I think this is actually a little bit better. See, that's a fork one that that guy's holding up. That's for your front forks. That's a gold valve, smaller one. I've already done the front forks on my bike. Anyways, this is really good, this manual here. So it's only a few pages long. So I'm going to go ahead and print that off too. So I have it and it's going to go in a file for my motorcycle. All right. So like the race tech, this is the technical part of the build now is all these shims. So you got to measure all of them. I've got a caliper here that is accurate enough to do this with my i unfortunately i took this apart this valve stack apart some of it i i'm sure i can figure out how it goes back together but the, the unfortunate part is i was trying to find it's calling for 44 millimeter wide shims here and there are some on the stock stack so i was going to see if i could if i had to combine those with race tech's valve stack here which it gives me and it starts off with 10 that are 44 millimeters in diameter unfortunately I had to phone race tech because there was no 44 millimeter shims in all these different shims kits that they gave me here so i got them all laid out and i started measuring them the reason why is when i phoned them they told me that this gold valve kit is too old and it's no longer supported anymore so this this valve kit so the shim stack that they sent me the the numbers for the shim stack don't match this valve and the ports on this valve are, aren't 44 millimeters so I would use a, a valve stack, a shim stack, pardon me, that would that would cover them, which are smaller than 44 millimeters. These are about 39 and a half millimeters. See, and they and they cover. So I was like, okay, great. Can I use? Can I just do it with the smaller shims? Can I can I still use this gold valve? And he said, no, I, you can't because it's no longer supported, and the shims shims, pardon me, the uh, the shim stack they sent me here will not work with this gold valve because they, it's no longer supported. They said so. Now I've just, I'm just waiting. I, I talked to the guy for a while. So he's going to get back to me and see what he can do. If they're either going to have to take this back. I paid for this whole kit. It wasn't cheap. It's my fault for not putting it in years ago. However, they did send the wrong shims, I think anyways. So it's, it's both of our faults, I guess I should, I should have put it in earlier. So we'll see what I said, do something for me. Tell me what I can, how I can make the stock piston work or how I can make this gold valve work. So I'm, now I've got everything apart here laying on the bench. I'm going to have to kind of put it all back in, in boxes and put it away, I guess, because this is, this is probably the most annoying thing I run into. Being a mechanic is waiting for parts or getting the wrong parts, especially when the parts that I need are a long ways away, and in this case, south of the border. Anyway, I was just going to show you before I stop this video, because I don't know how long it's going to take to get... i, I got to wait for these guys to get back to me. But this is the stock spring, I believe, out of the bike. So like I said, I was, that's valved for about 160 pound rider. This is valved for a 220 pound rider. Reason why is I'm over 200, but then you get, I've got an auxiliary fuel tank on the bike. I 
wear a pack when I'm riding in all my gear, so I think this would be accurate. And I could always back the preload off, but look at the difference in the in the coils here, how many there are, how tight the wind is. And I'm not sure, the diameter looks like it might be a little thicker as well. So just thought I'd show you the difference in springs. I know that some shops just respring, they don't revalve. I can see why now, because the, the valving part, building this, this stack is the, this is the technical part here. You gotta make sure you have all these in the right order. And it's not, it's not rocket science, but it's just, that's the part that's, that's gonna be the most tedious, I guess you could say, putting it back together and everything and putting the oil in and all that stuff's pretty easy. And they have a good manual on how to do all that. I printed all that off. I printed two copies of the valve stack, but now it's useless, so I can't use it. So anyways, I'll keep you guys posted. I'm gonna put all this stuff back in a box. There's not that many parts, fortunately, to these shocks. The, the biggest thing is this valve stack. I'd ha I gotta go back through it and figure out where all my shims were, which shouldn't be too terribly hard to do if I have to do it, but it's not something that I was planning on having to do. So I'll have to figure all that out and see if there's something in my manual that tells you how to, re how to, how to build the stack. Hopefully Racetech's gonna send me a valve stack to make it work, keep you guys posted on that. Okay, so after going back and forth with Racetech a bit, with tech support, I finally got my shim stack here. So when you get, this is an, like I say, this is an old 5001 gold valve. It's not uh, supported by Racetech anymore. So I was able to get a hold of tech support and they were able to dig up some old hard copies of some old information that they had. I should have put this, this thing in years ago, but it was just one thing led to another and I didn't get around to it. So they were good enough to, it took a while, but they were good enough to go through their archives and find a shim stack for me, find the old information for these 5,001 gold valves. I don't know how many of these things are out there, but if you do have one, what the difference is gonna be is that this uses 40 millimeter shims in here to cover the ports on your compression side. Rebound side is, I think, 34s. Have a look here. So there's your shim stack. This, this is, came with the gold valve. Here's some directions. There's some new directions that are a lot nicer for the new ones. When you go on the website, you can print that off. So between the two, you can get your shit, your stack that you need. So you're gonna have your compression, low speed, high speed, and an intermediate. This one, because it's wood riding, woods riding, I did have my intermediate. So I just highlighted the ones, the stacks that I needed, went through all my little packages of shims. Each package, you'll find that these, if you're using these, some of their, they're, see they're labeled, so in this, case it would just be built up for your sh12 or rh01 so here's your rh1 here which i wasn't using sh12 is should be on here maybe it's not it must be for a different shock setup so i've got the ch1 so anyway, what i'm saying is if you were using that rh01 and it was on here you'd have all your shims right there but if you don't you've got to open up all your stacks and then just go ahead and measure them course find the ones you need and build your shim stack so I've got quite a lot left over here the difference with the gold valve and my stock valve apparently this gold valve isn't as good as the new ones of course they've just changed the design and it's more efficient but I don't know they were selling these things for this bike so it's supposed to be an improvement but my original valve you can see is quite a lot thicker than the gold valve you can tell there the piston so that's why you get these two washers here to take up the extra space on the shaft. And then when I use my, the Racetex provides you with a new nut, it'll be with the old, with my washer that came off from my original piston there. When I put the nut on there, it should be just enough that if you have to peen it, you can to hold it on there. But Loctite is also provided here, high strength Loctite and some new seals. I'm gonna use this seal. I like the one piece. I ordered, I bought the one piece seal here. This is for the RM250. It's genuine Suzuki and it's one piece. You'd, I'd have to stretch it over the pit, the piston and shrink it back on there, but that's for a stock piston. So it might be a little bit different diameter or something here. I don't know. Or yeah, the, uh, the, the around the circumference would be the same, but I think it might have a little bit, not the diameter, but the width, sorry in here might be a little bit different. So I'm just gonna use the Racetech one. It'll have a new a new seal on there either way. So I'm glad it took a little while. You just, when you're dealing with 
situations like that you just have to be patient with the parts people work with them and like I said I, I paid for this I paid for this system so I wanted to use it and they were they were able to find the information that I needed so I'm really looking forward to putting this back together uh, like I say he said to run 2.5 weight shock oil I've got three weight he said that would work too so now I'm ready to assemble so I'm gonna get my torque value I do have there might I think the torque value might be in the in the race tech directions but I do have my factory service manual here which is easy enough to do I had to drill a 1 16th bleed hole in my piston as well number 52 here it says 1.6 mil or 1 16th of an inch so that's what I did drilled the bleed hole out what you're going to find is this gold valve yeah the 40 millimeter shims go on your compression so just put make sure you don't put your piston in upside down of course that's pretty straightforward anyway so I thought I'd let you guys know what the story was on this now it's got a it's got a mid valve or mid speed compression stack in there so you can't really tell I kind of pulled pulled the tension off it there but there's there's two stacks in there so there's a there's actually well it's kind of like almost three stacks because there's a couple of thick shims in between my high speed low speed compression and then there's a there's a two speed rebound as well so i've got those here low speed high speed rebound valve this bike is never going to see the as long as i own it, it's not going to see the track so this is just going to be for woods hopefully this helps with the rideability of the bike anyway i just thought i'd show you guys what if you're wondering like, why there's these three washers on there and things like that if you get a race tech gold valve those are some things that you might want to know or you might have to go through because on this it only shows one big washer up there so here's your your bleed screw and stuff this these ones are a lot nicer directions than the ones that came with the old valves but you can get through it it gives you everything you need like your procedure there of how to stack it all you just got to kind of remember that it's i think that it's all in order how you build your shim stacks but it's kind of the opposite you start with your compression you go smallest to biggest and then on your rebound you go biggest to smallest so it gets bigger as it hits the piston and then it gets smaller as it goes off the piston but i mean i'm sure you're going to see it when you, when you build your stack you're going to know right away if you did something wrong you'll, you'll look at it and see it kind of see the gap there in the two stage it's actually two stage with a mid valve stack as well you can kind of see there so that's what i was talking about okay well i'll show you guys how i'm going to put this back okay, 25 foot pounds is my specified torque that's in my directions this has got some sort of Loctite looking stuff on it, this spray on the nut already anyways, so that'll probably help. I'm just gonna use the stuff they gave me. I'm actually gonna put it in here on the, on the nut so I don't get it all over the place. <clears throat> so just wanna make sure you get some brake clean and I just dressed that a little bit. The threads got the burrs off with a thread file before I, threaded this on so I got the Loctite in there now don't have my tripod with me today so you're gonna have to bear with me here doesn't want to thread on straight come on pretty sure they gave me the right pitch nut I hope they did I don't have a digital torque wrench like they recommend but this one sure is accurate enough 25 foot pounds isn't a huge amount if i go a little bit over i'm not concerned about it i'm sure this thing can take it there we go that's better. okay so I scratched the bleed valve a little bit. You can see a couple little score marks there. It's not going to hurt anything. Just got to, come on, focus in. You just got to deburr it after you drill your hole through there. All right, and make sure that everything's tight. If you have up and down movement, of course, you're going to have to put some shims in there somewhere or some more washers or whatever it takes to tighten everything back up again. 
So I've got my new seal here. I'm going to leave this. This isn't going to want to stay on because of the, oops, the shape it's in, the shape it is. So I'm going to wait until I get my shock body here with the oil and everything in it. And then I'll put this put the seal on just before I slide the piston into the shock body. This is great. I'm really glad I'm getting this done because I've got to take it out of town to get it filled with nitrogen. And I want to be able to do that before the weekend because the shop that fills them with nitrogen is about an hour and a half away. I'll have to ride down, unfortunately, to get that done. All right, I'm going to go grab my shock body. All right, so <clears throat> Race Tech has this tool that they say is just the best thing since sliced bread. And they tell you in your directions there see so he's using it there and I'm sure those are really handy but I don't have one and I don't think they're real expensive it's just something that I've never got around to ordering so I took a piece of PVC pipe and just cut a notch in it like that so it doesn't have a very much surface area up here to put your fingers on but I think it'll be fine and this one I think that's for like one inch pipe it's actually a pipe joiner it's not pipe but I'm sure pipe would work pretty good if you just get the right ID anyway it fits right just inside there just fits perfectly inside my the, the ceiling head there so that works out well like I say I, it'd be nice to have a little bit more area to push down on so this is the part where you've got to I just like to lube up that o-ring a little it will be lubed up because it's going to push oil out and I just put my snap ring back on you'll see kind of a wear mark on your snap ring when you're doing this circlip retainer whatever they want to call it so I always put that I'm going to put it oriented the same way it came out so we've got to push down on this until the o-ring seals and then you won't be able to anymore because then you're going to be trying to compress the air that's in the nitrogen bladder so at that point you gotta take your valve stem out at the same time you're holding pressure on so you don't start getting low pressure and air going back into the shock body so push it down like that just until you can get your snap ring in there, which it looks pretty darn close now. Hold on, baby. Just make sure that's seated all the way. Last thing you want is that thing coming out when you charge it with nitrogen. Come on now. I'm a bit stubborn, but in any case, you get the point. Now, if you just add a little bit of air into your bladder here, do it with just your hands because you don't want to risk damaging your seal, but you can't put your fingers in there and get enough pressure on it. I don't know if you heard that, but the snap ring just clicked in, so it's back together. I'm going to just put a little bit of pressure back in the bladder here. Yeah, tire tool. There we go. Pushes everything back up, just gets a little bit of pressure in there so that <clears throat> Nothing's going to move. You know, this isn't going to go in and suck air in unintentionally. All right, so I followed all the directions. I've watched, it's nice to see there's lots of videos too on this besides mine. Helps you to do this now that I've got that on. Just remember where your two kind of bleed holes are here. Weep holes, whatever you want to call them. And you can go ahead and tap that back on get a I'm just gonna probably go get my my Babbitt hammer to do that and I believe that we're well on our way now got my new spring that I'm gonna put on next I guess I must have taken my Babbitt hammer home this will work just fine oh she goes you can also use a drift I got this aluminum drift here just something soft that's not gonna hurt it so now they say release 
add compression, pardon me, push down on the shock. That's what they're saying while you release pressure in the bladder. There you go. <clears throat> Hopefully there's no air in there. Hmm. You release it just before you fill it with nitrogen, but I want this to stay, everything to stay tight. I don't want to bump this and knock the, the piston down or the ceiling head down. So I think I'll just go ahead and put a little bit more air back in there. I shouldn't have drained it out. Just putting like 10 PSI and that's something else you want to watch for is make sure, see how it extended when I put the air into the nitrogen bladder. That's a good sign. If it doesn't do that, chances are that there's something wrong. Like you've got some air in there, maybe not, not, not enough oil or something like that. So as long as you follow the directions, everything should be good. All right, I'm ready to put the spring on now, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and do that. So I got the, <clears throat> I'm just gonna clean a little bit, some grunge and dirt in here that I didn't get to, so I'm just gonna clean that out a little bit. So the snap ring is, hold really well in there. So then they're, they're saying that best way to do it is charge it with nitrogen before you start compressing your spring which sounds like it's the proper procedure I just want to put all this stuff together because it's been apart for quite a while now Get some of this out and I don't want to misplace anything or mix any parts up even though there's not much left to mix up So I'm just going to run this down before I set my tension, my preload or anything. I'm going to run it down and have nitrogen put in it. The nitrogen charge for my shim stack and body weight, I think I was talking to Louie at Race Tech. He's in the tech support department. And I'm pretty sure what he got back to me with was 160 PSI of nitrogen in the shot in the bladder. So that's what I'll be putting in it. I think that the factory charge is 139 PSI. So quite a bit lower, but it's also for a quite a bit lighter rider. And there we go. Just going to snug this up a bit. I'm going to be throwing this in the travel bag on my saw tail and zipping down to the town south of here. Hopefully in a couple days I can get down there before they close up shop for the day. And I'll have them, I'm just gonna tighten everything up so nothing comes apart. And I'll have them recharge this with nitrogen. So I'll take, hopefully they'll let me do a little bit of a shop tour maybe when I get down there or film them filling the, the, the fork up. There's my race tech part number in that. So like I was showing you, this is quite a lot heavier spring than the one from the factory. I'm really looking forward to how this performs. I don't know how much I'm going to ride the bike. I am going to be putting it up for sale, but between now and then, maybe I can get out on it a couple times. All right, so that's where I'm at with it. I'm just really happy that Race Tech did the ex went the extra mile and didn't leave me hanging, you know, with this old part that's no longer supported. They actually got me the shim stack that I needed, and now I'll be back in business again. So I thought I'd share that in case you take one of these apart and you have that old that old gold valve in there. All right, so next we'll be off to the suspension shop. Just finished off, got the charge at ion two suspension. We just wanted to show you guys the shop, some of the guys. Starting is 19 turns, 165 PSI nitrogen, full service suspension shop here. And uh, so far good service and good success with these guys.